<clears throat> the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. I can't hear nobody. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Windows of heaven are open. Come on. The blessings are flowing tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. And that's why I'm happy, and that's why I'm happy, and that's why I'm happy tonight. Well, we got four of you smiling. Okay. <laughs> hey, okay, let's go ahead and we'll open up tonight and uh, get into this thing. Brother Bill, if you don't mind, how about leading us in prayer tonight, please? Yeah, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for many blessings. We ask you, Lord, to look after our pastor and mm -hmm. sister down there. They travel and have some fun. We ask you, Lord, to touch the song as he brings the word. Tell us, Lord, just have your wonderful way with us. In mm -hmm. Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hey, uh, tonight, you know, our pastor's... Um, Gallivanting, honeymooning. I guess. I mean, I don't know what he's doing. But anyway, he's he's in in uh in Saint Augustine. I told him to go to the uh, downtown and just look at all those real neat old houses and stuff, and go see the fort. If you've never been, you need to go and take a good look at it. But anyway, thank you for coming. I know y'all braved it out here tonight. You heard it. I was here. Preacher was gone. <laughs> Goody, 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 goody. Hey, uh, let's see. I know there are some announcements to make, but I don't know what they are. Where's my wife? She left me. Yeah, she decided she'd want to go down and stay with her sister for a week down at the beach. So, of course, my sister-in-law does not like to go unless she goes. So, anyway, that's the way it works. <laughs> so I've, been co I've eaten pizza now for two days in a row. I, I set the stove on fire last night. It's true. I, I was in there studying for this, and I went back in the kitchen, and I looked in my oven, and my oven was on fire. That little thing that has the, the uh, electricity that goes around it was just... So I bought one today. Yeah, that's what he said. But anyway, it's been fun. I can't wait till she gets back so I can eat. Hey, tonight uh, we're going to talk about some stuff. Uh, I want to tell you about a, a, a prayer request. It's kind of an urgent prayer request tonight. It's uh, my daughter's friend, uh, her little boy, J.C. Parton. He's um, in ICU. He's 10 years old, got cystic fibrosis, and he had, a, I guess, a seizure today, or it could have been a stroke, I don't know, but He's, he's really fighting for his life tonight, so tonight when we pray, I want you to lift him up really big time. I mean, I know God. You know what? We've, we've been here before, and uh, we, we've seen some mighty miracles happen. Uh, God has showed his grace, and which we're going to talk about his grace tonight, which actually is his favor. And um, I know that if it's his will, that he will lift him up, and uh, he will heal him. And if it hadn't been, you know... For Jesus going to the cross, none of this would be possible, but he did, and now we have that access to the Father. And by doing that, we can go straight to him and say, Help, Lord, and he does. So tonight, I want you to think about something. Uh, you know, there, there's always been words and things in the Bible that I've always had trouble trying to understand. And one of the words, you know, in the Bible it talks about grace you know, and I've, I've kind of told you a while ago what really grace meant, but what do you think grace means to you? I mean, what kind of definition would you give it, grace? Anybody want to take a jab at it? Huh? Yeah? The ultimate sacrifice, forgiveness, and love. Okay, that would work. 
You know, the, the dictionary uh, has this definition for grace is nothing but the pure favor of God. I mean favor of God. Have you ever thought about that? Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, there's so much favor. You know, you are the favored child. And I thought about each one of us, you know, we, we, we think sometimes that we walk around and, and we, we're, we're downhearted. We, we think that nothing's going our way. Everything is, is, I mean, everybody's against us. You know, there, nothing is going right. You know, I've got problems right and left. But you know what? Because you are a child of God, you have his grace, which is favor. You have his favor. You are favored. So we have to realize who we are, and, and we have to realize that, that, that we are favored. We have an advantage over other people. We, we have a big advantage of over, over other people because we have a Father in heaven who owns everything, knows everything, do anything. And all we got to do is say, help. And he knows. I want to talk to you about a guy who had a lot of favors. His name was Abraham. You know, he started out in life with that name called Abram. And then it was changed to Abraham. But, you know, over in the book of Galatians, uh, sometimes people think that Abraham was really a special guy. But, you know, you and me both are special because of him and because of something that we have that Jesus has given us. And because Jesus gave us this thing called faith, uh, we're special too. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the book of Galatians chapter 3. And I'm going to read a few verses, then we're going to kind of pick it out and look at it. And I'm going to hopefully show you some things tonight that maybe you can take home with you and use and, uh, and remember, and, and you'll really feel really... I forgot. Here, Keith, I'll get you if you want me to. I forgot all about that. You know that? If I could remember everything, I'd be great. Yeah, if I could remember my wife's name sometimes, I'd be all right. <clears throat> I could, if I could remember Jan's name, but I, I know it now. <laughs> huh? No, it ain't Pat. No. It, anyway. Okay, let me start reading to you here a little bit. This is uh, in Galatians. You know, Paul was writing, and these people, the Galatians had, had, had heard Paul and, and realized that that their salvation came from faith, and they had got to, there was other people, some Judaizers had come in and started talking to them and telling them, no, you, you, can't, you can't be a Christian just by having faith. You've got to keep the law. You've got to do the law. You've got to maintain all of this and do the things that we tell you to do. And Paul got word of it, and he wrote back to them, and then he, he realized what was going on. But, you know, these people were happy. They had just learned how to become a Christian. And they were happy, and so anything anybody told them, they were up for it. And so here's these people went in and tried to lead them astray. You know, it's like the preacher says, we've got to know the truth. If we don't know the truth, what's it going to do? It's going to keep us down. But if we know the truth, it's going to make us free in John chapter 8. So if we know the truth, and, and if they know the truth, then guess what? It's going to keep them free, make them free. But it said this, he said, O foolish Galatians, it says, Who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you? He said, This only what I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law? He said, How did you get it? By the law? Or by the hearing of faith? And they knew that they got this by faith. They heard it through faith. And then he says, Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? He says, Have ye suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, it says, He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And we as Christians, we know this today. And, but, you know, there's some people still think that you have to work for your salvation even today. But we know as Christians that our, our salvation comes by faith through Jesus Christ. And he's the one that give it to us. Which is kind of a neat thing. It's something that we don't have to work for. You know, I guess we could have been born in any part of the world. But we've been very fortunate to be born in this great place called the United States of America. I mean, very fortunate. 
And, you know, like me, <clears throat> when I, I was born, you know, um, I mean, my mom, she adopted me and everything, and, and, and I was brought up in a Christian church, you know. I mean, I, I, that was pretty good. And so you would think from the time I was born till now that I had always been a Christian, but believe it or not, before now, or bef before I became, I was not a Christian. I was out in the world. I'd done things. I wasn't really a bad person, but I was a lost person. But then when I got to hear this thing, this faith thing, this thing about Jesus, I realized one day that, that I needed him. And he had been looking for me, and he'd been pulling on me, and and finally one day I yielded to him and said, Yes, Lord, I take what you have. And so I became that person, that Christian. And then here's something. I'm going to read this to you. This guy named Abraham, uh, he was one of the same kind of people. He believed God. And then it said that God, uh, it says, uh, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, it says, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, it says that the same are the children of Abraham. So, you see, if we are the people of faith, and if we believe we are, and we believe in Jesus, then what are we? We are the children of Abraham. So if we are the children of Abraham, that gives us a little special privilege above other people. Whether you believe that or not, it gives us a great privilege. <clears throat> It says here, Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, it says the same are the children of Abraham, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen, which who was the heathen? Me. Everybody do this. I mean, that, it was <laughs> we were all heathens at one time, right? But because of this faith in Jesus, because Jesus gave us his faith, we become saved, and so we're not a heathen anymore. It says, but we've done it through faith. It says, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So you see, I told you a little while ago that because ye are of faith and because you are a Christian and because you're the children of Abraham, you have a little special blessing more than what other people have. I, I, I feel so sorry for these people that, go around thinking that they're having such a wonderful time in this world. They don't know anything about Jesus. You know, I have a friend of mine that, that he, uh, I asked him yesterday, I was talking to him, and and uh, he was in, doing some inspecting for me on a building that I'm building. And and I, I asked him, you know, we were, he was talking about, I like to read books. I said, well, have you ever read the Bible? He said, I used to read that. I said, you used to read it? Why don't you read it now? Well, you know, I just got other things to do. I said, well, you really should read this thing. I said, because it really tells you a lot of good things you need to know. Well, yeah, I guess I probably should. But I'm, 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 I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. Goody, goody. Then I have another friend that I was building the building for, and I tried to tell her, you really need to take heed to this thing. You really need to read this book. And you, she knows that I'm a Christian. She, she knows this. But she said, well, I feel like I'm okay. But she ain't okay. So I said, you, you just need to believe. You just need to, to see where you're at in this thing and trust Jesus and let him tell you what you need to do from then on out. But I was thinking about this thing. It says, and the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith. It says, preach before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then I got to thinking about this. This is something that's bothered me. It really hadn't bothered me, but it's, it's uh, made me wonder for a long, long time. Just who am I? And then it says, So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. So I'm, I'm of faith, and I'm blessed with faithful Abraham. And then I was wondering, okay, if I'm blessed, what am I blessed with? For? What, what am, what, what's my blessing? What, what, what comes on me? Why? What's in it for me? I don't know. What do you think? Anybody got a clue? No? No? You don't know? Huh? Okay, but that's good. But what is the blessing? What, what was the blessing of Abraham? What, was, what did God promise Abraham? Hey, 
Let's go back over here to, in Genesis chapter uh, 12. Genesis chapter 12. Let me read you. Genesis chapter 12. Let's do verse 1 and 2. Well, I might do three, but let's just do one and two. It says, Now the Lord said unto Ab Abram at that time, Get thee out of the country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house into a land that I will show thee. Now here's a guy. He just took God for his word and did what he said. But he says, And I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So we know this is what happened to him. But then God told Moses, and he told Abraham, here's the things that I'm going to bless you with. And so let's go over here to chap, uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 28. <clears throat> There's some things that it'll tell you to do and it'll tell you not to do. Okay? And I hope you can see these. Let's start at uh, verse 1. I don't know if I give Keith this one or not, but anyway, blessings of Abraham. Chapter 28, it says, And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently, talking about the people, unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Well, that's one of the blessings. Yet, I don't want to lose my place here. There was a guy that was at the prayer breakfast this last prayer breakfast for the President of the United States. And uh, he was talking about all the blessings that America had received because they trusted in God. But they also talked about all the things that America was going to receive because they put God behind, put him on the back burner, tried to uh, snuff him out. You know, they tried to do that at the Democratic National Convention. But these blessings that we have God has already promised it to each one of us sitting here in this, these chairs. If, if you love Jesus, if, if you're of faith, if, if you trusted him, these are the blessings. And he said he's going to put you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So we've got to do this. It says, blessed shalt thou be in the city. Okay. And then it says, And blessed shalt thou be in the field. I like that. Blessed shalt thou be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thine sheep. Pretty good blessings, huh? <clears throat> blessed shalt be thy basket and thy store. It says, Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in. Not bad. And blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. And then it says that the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. It says they shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. You know, I think that's a pretty doggone good. You know what I mean? All of these things that God promised Abraham are mine. And then it says the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses. And in all that thou settest thine hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. It says, The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, as he has sworn unto thee. I think, you know, my goodness alive, America, the Christian, that, that, that's what America was founded on, was this very thing. It says unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. And then listen to what he said here, number 10. It says, and all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of thee. Maybe that's the reason why that the Christians today have such a hard time. What do you think? I mean, maybe it's because they're afraid of us. Because they know that we have a special deal with God because, I, you know, Jesus come to this earth. He didn't have to, but he come to this earth and he took my sins, which you see, I didn't think I was real bad, but I still had sin. I was sin. I mean, whether it was a good sin or a bad sin or whatever kind of sin it was, he took everything that, was, that I had 
on me that was against him, and it's gone. When he went to the cross, that blood shed, I told Connie one day, I said, you know, one of these days, I said, we get up here, we want to preach a sermon, and I want you to make me a, a red silk um, covering. So, and, and you come up here, you know, and we're going to be talking about the blood of Jesus, and I want you to just drape it over me. And that will signify all the blood. And you see, you can't see me through that blood, and neither can God see me through that blood. Because Jesus' blood has covered me up. And my sins are disappeared. They're gone forever. And I thought, wouldn't that be wonderful for people to see that? But back to this, back to this. It says, so then, talking about us, they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham for as many as are under the works of the law or under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth not in the, all things which are written in the book of the law to do them, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident, for the just shall live by faith. I think today, for Christians, living by faith has got to be a daily routine for us. We've got to live by faith. We've got to understand that that everything that we have to do or, or have in our life is, comes through faith. God give us faith to believe. You know, when everything is going really good in your life, there's no problems, uh, you don't have to worry too much about this, it seems. But when you have problems in your life, when you have sicknesses or you have uh, monetary problems or you have things, then you really start thinking about this faith thing, believing. You have to really start believing then. That's when it really gets tough to do. But when we realize that God's taking care of everything, God's already blessed me. He said it before. He blessed Abraham, and I'm, I'm of Abraham. I'm, I'm Abraham's seed. So I should not have to worry. I should not worry about what's going on. But because I take on to myself things, or when I say take on things it's actually when I do things contrary to the law or not the law but what Jesus tells me not to do then I guess that kind of puts a hamper on everything don't it let me ask you this question and this is a real a real good one everybody should be able to answer this today everybody sat in these chairs today everybody lived really a perfect day right you didn't get mad one time you, you, you didn't, didn't tell a little little story just a little one. You um, didn't get aggravated, you know, driving down Highway 20 or Highway 27. You didn't want to blow your horn any d today or, you know, nobody pulled out in front of you, right? I mean, there, this is all really good stuff, you know. You didn't get a notice in the mail saying that you owed too much money or, or either you paid too much on your bill and they want to send you some back, you know. Or <laughs> Y'all didn't, didn't get in mail like that today? I mean, no? Okay, okay, you got it yesterday, okay. You see, what happens is, is that because, let's just say this, because Tony doesn't do everything just right, uh, I'm, I may not receive all the blessings that I really have coming to me because I, I put roadblocks in the way. I put little detours in it. And, and it causes me to steer offline, and and so it, it's my fault. That's the way I see it. It's my fault that I don't have what God's promised me. It's because I don't do exactly everything that he wants me to do. You see, I'm not a puppet. When God saved you, he didn't, he didn't save you for you to be a puppet. He saved you to fellowship with him. That's why he came to this earth, is to fellowship with you and me. I wonder why, he, you know, have you ever thought about why God sometimes was where he was at and just probably living in bliss, you know, I don't know. And it, then he decided to make me and Bill, you know, or me and Daniel or somebody, you know. Then he decided to make us, and then he thought, oh, Lord. <laughs> But no, he didn't think that at all. 
but he made us so we could fellowship one with another, so so we could be one. And, and you know, I guess you might say, when I accepted Jesus as my Savior, I became part of him. Jesus lives in me. I live in him. Uh, I become a son of his. You become a daughter of his. And so now we're one. We, we have uh, royalty blood in us, you see. Every, every one of you are, are princesses and prince, and, and, and we're, we, we are royalty. And I wonder sometimes why we don't really think that way. Have you ever thought about it? Why don't we think that way? Why don't we think that, 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 you know, we have this royal blood in it, but yet we walk around most of the time, and I don't think this is very good to do either, but we walk around uh, that old, remember Hee Haw? Blue despair and agony on me, oh. And we do that a lot. Maybe not like that, but we do it. I'll give you a little exercise to do. Do this. <clears throat> when you start talking to somebody the next time, start listening to all the positive things that they're talking about. Well, you may not hear none of them. But listen to also everything that people start saying negatively. See, see if, it's, if it's a negative thing or if it's a positive thing. Do that. You, you watch. Start, even when you, before you leave here tonight, start talking to one. Of course, y'all might know what you're going to do, but you, know, but you start thinking from the, tonight, tomorrow, the next day, and you start talking to people, and you see just exactly how they talk. And that will tell you how they are spiritually most of the time. It's, you know, I listened to a friend of mine preach one time, and he, and he said that very same thing. And I got to listening to it, and it's almost like I don't want to open my mouth because I don't want to say something bad or wrong or negative. But then what I have got to learn, and I've, I've learned to do this a lot, is that when I start picking up this book and I start reading what this thing tells me to do, and I start reading things about Abraham and how I'm a seed of Abraham. Um, look here. Let me read this to you. Verse 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Listen, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles, which is us, through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. I like this part of it too. It says, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men. It says, Though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now, listen to this part, just so you know who you are. It says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. You see, we're the seed, right? Remember? We're of faith. And if we're of faith, we're the children of Abraham, so we're his seed. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. All of us, if we'll ever get to the point and realize that you and me have the blessings of Abraham, we have this salvation, but we have all this other stuff that he's blessed us with too. We've got we to gotta believe that. We got to believe that. You know, I don't want everything. I just want more. I mean, this really, you know. I mean, I don't want more just to have more. <clears throat> I love to do this. I love when, when God has blessed. Has blessed. I love to do things for people that they don't know that I do. Does that make sense? I, I like to do little secret things for people, you know. I like to give them washers and dryers. I like to give them cars. I like to give them just all kind of stuff. And I don't want them to know where it comes from. It just appears there. And if you're blessed of Abraham through him, 
by Jesus and you're able to do stuff like this, then my goodness, that's what it's all about. Remember in the book of Acts, I think it's in uh, chapter 4. Remember when uh, all the guys got together and they sold, let me see if I'm, if that's where I'm thinking about I want to go. Uh, yeah, chapter 4, verse 32. Let me restart in 32. It says, And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that ought of the things which they possessed was his own. It says, But they had all things common, and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace, and remember that word we said grace was favor, great favor, was upon them all. It says, Neither was there any among them that lacked anything, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the peace prices of the things that were sold. Listen to what they did. And laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And I thought, my goodness alive, why did all that happen? Because they were blessed. Because they believed Jesus and because they took what they had and were able to share it with somebody. You know what happens when you uh, sow into somebody's life? Anybody got a clue? You know, you know the answer. You can't change it, can you? Amen. I mean, that. I, see, the sister, she knows what I'm talking about. You, you cannot, I can promise you this, you think, well, this is all I got. No, it ain't. It is if you don't give something away. But because of we being Christians, because of we the people of faith, because we're the seed of Abraham, because of what God told them the blessings would be in Deuteronomy, because of all of this, we are able to turn around and give it back, and then God gives back to us. You see, there's nothing that I have that I'll ever be able to take to heaven with me. I can't take anything that I have on this earth to heaven with me with the exception of one thing. And you know what that is? It's the people that I'm able to witness to and lead to the Lord, and they decide, and Jesus decides, that they want to be one of his children and that these people go to heaven. You know, one of these days you're going to get to heaven and you're going to wonder, how did they get here? Or are you going to think, oh my goodness, look at there. I just think that this blessing thing, this thing uh, is so real that we forgot about it. And I wonder sometimes why people are so downhearted. Well, I, I tell you, I think this is the reason why. Times are tough. We don't have but a little. And so we've got to keep it because we might need it tomorrow. And so we do, and by doing that, we have nothing. And what we should be doing is taking what we got, whatever it is. Remember they had lack? They, they, had, they lacked nothing? Because what did they do? They took what they had and laid it down at the apostles' feet. And then the distribution was made to every man, so nobody had need of anything. And I can, I can promise you this. There's no doubt in my mind that if you'll do that, you'll come to me and you say, you know what, you were right. I told a lady one night in this auditorium here, this has been about six years ago, I had preached one time on tithing. And she said, you know, I, I just don't know if I can tithe or not. And um, I said, well, you know, do what you can do. And uh, she said, well, you know, I think I'm going to try it. I said, okay, try it. And about three or four weeks later, she came back to me. She said, you know what? I started doing that, and I've got more money left over now than I've ever had. Hmm. Oh, I guess maybe she didn't have the bills that month to pay for or whatever. But anyway. And I think, huh? <laughs> you know, and, and I'm not sure some of y'all can tell the same stories. <clears throat> Let me say this real quick. In 1994, 1994, 
going through some tough times. And um, actually, 1992, I, I heard a guy preach, and I realized that I really, I really needed to just trust Jesus 100% and not worry about anything. 94 was going through some tough times. And then in 1996, I listened to a guy preach. I sat right behind him, shook his hand, talked to him. And that night, it, <clears throat> the Lord spoke to me in such a just, I mean, it was almost like I'm talking to you. And he told me to do a thing. And I, I said, ooh. And I said, really? He said, yeah, do this and I'll do this. I said, hmm, okay. And I said, yes, sir, I'm going to do it, whatever it takes. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of what you told me to do. And uh, I had two houses that I had on the market to sell. And uh, I have had, had them for two years, paying interest on houses, two houses for two years. And, and he said, you go do this. And he said, I'll take care of everything else. I said, okay, yes, sir, I'm, I'm with you. I had three dollars that night. I, I give my three dollars in, in the offering. And uh, when I woke up the next morning, and about eight o'clock, my realtor called me. She said, "Told me, she said, I don't know what happened last night, but you know, I got two contracts on your houses, and they sold." Yes. And I said, "Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you for the favor of God. You know what I'm talking about." And, uh, you know, the devil tried to block everything I, he could do to keep me from doing what I was going to do. But, man, I tell you what, blood, sweat, and tears, I got it done. Boom. And that changed my thinking about me being blessed with faithful Abraham. If I'll just trust him, believe him, and, and, and believe Jesus for what he said in this book and do the things that's outlined in this book for me to do, I guarantee you that there's none of you sitting here tonight that will ever go lacking. Have I done, have I made, oh my goodness alive. Has everything been perfect? No. But I tell you what, every day I'm trying to get closer and closer and closer to him to do the things that he wants me to do. And every day I want to share more and more of this story to somebody else so that they know and experience the same joy that I've experienced. You know what I mean? None of us sitting in these, this auditorium here tonight, you don't have to hang your head down one minute. You can lift your head up high, no matter what comes up against you, and say, my God will supply all of my needs according to his riches, according to his, what he wants. And you know what? He does that for what? I guess maybe he does it so he can look good because, you know, when God looks good to other people, what do they want to know? More about that God, right? I think so. I think, he want, I think people, you know, I want to know more about God. When I see people being blessed, I want, I want to know what's going on in their life. And, uh, and I think we all do too. Anyway, uh, there's more to this, but we don't have time for it tonight. <clears throat>